I'm out at my neighbor's yard this morning working on some projects, the lawn to food forest project here, and I've been making a lot of headway on some garden aspects, but in particular this high tunnel, getting a lot of the wooden elements framed out so that when we finally get some days up in the mid 50s at some point, we'll get a thaw here at some point, uh, we'll be in a position to be able to put a skin on this and move it forward. So I'm going to share some notes about what I'm doing here and would love to get some feedback from you. Uh, I can link here to a past video where I talk about this a little bit, but this is a, the metal components you see here are from a kit from Farmer's Friend. Uh, I still have the same opinion as I did before. Seem like they're, you know, good instructions, straightforward, reasonable price, but I'm not saying I think it's the best thing ever. But uh, our, my friend Eric and our friend Juan helped get that metal part up and that was wonderful. And so now I'm focusing on a number of elements here. I've got um, all the wood you see is from Black Locust. It's, there's a local lumber company that processes Black Locust and I buy their offcuts at $25 a truckload. So every bit of wood you see in here costs less than $25, which is kind of crazy. And the bottom run, I thought it would be prudent to have these slab wood cuts. I think it's a nice look as well. They run across the entire bottom. They overlap with these angle cuts. I used an electric chainsaw to rough out these cuts. So they overlap, they have some screws going through them. And then I sharpened a bunch of black locust staves. I talked about that in another video. I use a chop saw to do it. A little sketchy, but it works pretty well. And I wailed those deep, deep, deep into the ground with a sledgehammer and threw some screws from them into the wood. So the wood is locked down and then with these pipe clamps, that locks it down onto the metal. So it's gonna help reduce the chance of this lifting. I think that's a decent insurance policy. I slipped in these polycarbonate panels just between the wood and the soil on the inside. So there's a little bit of an insulation break and it allows me to build the beds up higher. I didn't lock them in with screws because I may or may not take them out. The way this uh, tunnel is meant to work is to have these side curtains lift the poly for ventilation and i'm not quite sure yet if that'll get in the way of that the same pattern on this side this is the south side and you can see on certain days i'm working on the high tunnel certain days i'm working on the ditches and the drainage chipping away at both every scoop of soil that comes out to help release and move water goes into the high tunnel so that we keep building topsoil in there and that pattern has worked out Pretty nicely. You can get a sense of how much additional material has been added in. We've gone up about a foot and a half with a mix of rotten hay and topsoil on top of two feet of topsoil that was deposited here when we dug the pond. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how fertile these gardens can be in the spring. This is the eastern end wall that I'm looking at and this will be the main entrance uh, that will come and go. Our access to this part of uh, our neighbor's property happens right through here. So the plan is to have a dedicated walkway flanked in beautiful flowers and snacks with a Dutch door set that's mounted on this side so it can swing open this way since we'll be coming and going more that way. I framed out the Dutch doors on the west end and I'll talk about those in a moment, but you can see we used some really sturdy locust members to go up and meet this first uh, metal arch and that again has those straps pounded over with a hammer, locked into the wood, and then a little tech screw zapped in to the side to lock the metal so it can't slide around. And it's each one of these additional layers is adding some really nice structural rigidity to this whole element. I put in these funky angle braces. I kind of like the look of them. It's like a hexagonal portal sort of vibe. <laughs> and what I may end up doing, you can see down at the bottom, again, wherever there was some room i pounded in a three foot or longer locust stave that was sharpened as deep into the earth as possible and zapped some screws in so it's going to help with freeze thaw shifting and pitching i think it's going to lock this whole structure in none of these posts have been post hole dug i didn't really want to disturb the soil that's here but with enough of these pins going down and some of them at various angles uh, i think that's going to add a lot of rigidity as far as the base of it wanting to slide and I may hammer in one or two locust staves at an angle and bury that in soil and zap that in so it can't slide forward and backward. 
the far side or the west side, the intention, as I mentioned in a past video, and I got a lot of affirmative feedback from folks that it makes sense to have access on both sides of this. Uh, it's a similar pattern to the overall framing uh, there. And then these are the start of the Dutch door system. Each of these panels are just under four feet wide and three feet tall. So it's six feet tall by uh, four feet wide. And they're each on their own set of hinges. I'm really proud of how this came out. Um, they swing really smoothly, considering the hinges are sourced from my bucket o scavenged hinges, just random hinges found in dumpsters or at guard, uh, garage sales and yard sales and that kind of thing. It always pays to hoard if it's small objects that don't rot. <laughs> and I think there's some real value in having these two doors articulate on their own. So there's a top and the bottom. And what I think will happen is in the peak of summer, we'll have this door just be completely open. And I'll figure out a way to protect the plastic that's over here and be able to lock it in position so it doesn't get caught by the wind and swing. And what I'll end up doing at some point, sooner than later, is figuring out a way for these two doors to easily lock together. I think the lowest tech thing I can do is simply drill a hole through the top and the bottom um, and have a sharpened wooden stave that drops in. So they're locked together and they can act as one big door. You can see I put half inch hardware cloth in there so that even if there is no uh, poly on these, it'll protect from rabbits and deer, maybe chipmunks, although some of these gaps are a little wide. Uh, my intention here is to put uh, rigid insulated polycarbonate panels on the top and bottom, and that will be on there perhaps year round, definitely through the winter. Maybe in the spring I can take the one off the top so that the mesh is there. Maybe I leave it on and just open the top. All that could be figured out later. They're not going to be committed onto it. I'll just use some simple wooden battens to zap the polycarbonate panels on and figure out a way so they overlap so there's not an air gap there. The poly, the flexible six mil poly for the whole structure is going to go into wiggle wire channel that'll run along that top metal and then the excess will be pulled down and be battened onto all of these. And these will have polycarbonate panels as well that can come off in the summer. This little gap in here, what I will do is put on hinges a polycarbonate panel with a wax piston uh, based automatic vent opener so that there's a little bit of automatic venting that happens on this side and the far side passively if it overheats in the uh, swing season. I mentioned in a recent video the idea of uh, different, like geeking out on shovels and having holes in shovels in order to help with muck soil. And so I've been using some shovels to harvest out. This was a four foot wide by 50 foot long raised bed last year. And now it's going to be a four foot by 50 foot depressed bed. It's going to go down about six inches so we can do wet crop growing. We can do watercress in here in the fall and winter and dig a little channel so water can flow and then summer we'll be doing rice. And it's a huge amount of soil even though it doesn't look like much going down about six to eight inches and four feet wide all the way down the length of this tunnel. That rich topsoil that we built up last year can migrate into the high tunnel. I took an old plastic uh, sheet for a pool cover and I covered this western end and I'll pull it back periodically, load in some soil, put this back on top to insulate and keep it from freezing too solid. We're going to come into some cold weather here and I don't want this to all seize up. But you can see it's underneath here. It's crusty but it's not frozen and so that's really helpful. It's going to allow the worms to continue to work all winter. So what re remains to be done with this structure is to get the wiggle wire channel established, which I'll do one of these days soon. Finish the Dutch doors on this side, although I thought it would be nice to share the design, the implementation on the far west end first, in case people are seeing that and have some real glaring issues that they're aware of that I'm not before I do the nicer side. Lots of these sorts of projects, I'll do the far side or the least visible, the least interacted, portion of it first to get a feel for it and then the side that I'm going to interact with more 
or the areas that are more zone one, zone two, more intimate. I do them once I got my feet wet. Uh, so I'll look for some feedback on what you've seen on that end before I commit to what this end looks like. Once we get some warmth, we'll get poly on there. And the next big design challenge or fun with this will be to figure out how we integrate compost heating into this whole system. But I'm going to wait until we actually have it skinned because there's no point in generating warmth if it's just going to get lost to the cloudy, overcast, unending days of January and February. This is basically what our sky will look like 90% of the time until March. <laughs> I'm going to head back towards the house. My fingers are cold yet again, making a video holding a little icy metal phone. You can see I got to improve the gate there too. I don't really tend to get too cold when I'm working outside in the winter, but I definitely get cold when I'm standing still just blabbing about working. Um, so that's the update there. Give, share some feedback. Give me some ideas if you think I'm missing something. And one last thing would be for those of you that have signed up to be members of the Edible Acres YouTube channel, thank you so, so much. I'm still trying to work out the kinks of what will be nice offerings of appreciation and reciprocation to you. So bear with me while I figure that out. And for everyone else, thank you all so much for being part of this community. And I hope uh, you are staying warm and comfortable this winter and are all healthy and engaged in rewarding activities. I hope, I hope. Take care.